going over here to the streets of L.A. here. We have the Lakers here getting three and a half points at the house versus the Boston Celtics in this one. Over and under sitting at 235 and a half in this one, guys. Josh, Lakers coming back home off of a six-game road trip, but it's also the last game of a Celtics uh, six-game road trip uh, in this one. How are you looking at this game, my brother? Yeah, I mean, this one was just a bit of an auto bet for me on the Celtics at three and a half. That's just a cheap number. I think against the Lakers team that I I still don't believe in. I still I think that we can safely say they're the team that a lot of us thought they would be, where they can beat up on teams that they should beat up on, and that's what they've done. If you look at their last six, three and three straight up, three and three against the spread. You know, beating teams like Washington, beating teams like Detroit, and covering. Uh, you know, losing to teams like Philadelphia, Cleveland, and Toronto. Now I know they were missing players in the Cleveland Toronto game, uh, Anthony Davis, and then the Toronto missing Davis and LeBron as well. But, uh, you know, this isn't a team that's shown itself capable of matching up to the big teams as yet, uh, even when they are fully healthy. You know, you look at their home games, they've beaten two teams in the playoffs or that are currently sitting in the playoffs since the 1st of November. Two teams, that's it. New Orleans and Portland. And New Orleans were under strength in that game and it went to overtime. And Portland were in a very rough schedule spot. So, you know, this isn't the greatest schedule spot for Boston, I think. So, you you, you know, you can make a case there. But back-to-back without travel, I think we can see the best of the Celtics in a matchup that probably favours them a little bit more. It's going to be played much more fast tempo than what the last two games have been played at. They come up against a Lakers team that don't have the wing defence that the Clippers have, but they don't have the wing defence that um, Golden State present either. That They have different defensive schemes where they have been good in their own right, uh, but again, there's vulnerabilities there. And I think that the Celtics are going to be able to take full advantage of that. And, uh, you know, one thing, you know, we were talking about before we went on air as well, back to back in the same arena. I think that's going to help the Celtics a lot, especially their shooting, which has been terrible the last two games, you know, sub 30 percent from three point range against the Clippers and the Warriors. But not necessarily because of bad looks either. We're talking wide open shots, just not falling for them, which is going to happen in the NBA sometimes. You know, you can go a few games where things just aren't going right for you, but the team is still being able to produce those wide open looks. And if they can against the Lakers, I think, you know, in an environment where they played last night, they should be able to get their legs underneath them early and they should be able to find some rhythm. And if that's the case, I just don't trust the Lakers to be able to keep up in a shootout. They're not a team that I think you can really trust. If they fall behind double digits, maybe they can claw their way back once or twice. But if it keeps happening, eventually, you know, they're just going to be able to, they're not going to be able to sort of keep pace. And I think that's exactly what's going to happen tonight. So I like Boston's offense to bounce back in this matchup a lot. I think the number is a little bit cheap. It should be four, four and a half here. Uh, And we see a a much more aggressive Tatum and Brown from the get-go here in a matchup that suits them immensely. So, yes, I do think Anthony Davis is going to have an absolute field day as well if they do play Blake Griffin. But I think that, you know, Boston will probably be able to uh, get a little bit more creative than just throwing out um, Blake and hoping for the best there. I think you'll see a lot more Grant Williams matching up on him, hopefully his size and strength. Uh, Maybe we see some Noah Vonley in the rotation for tonight as well just to try and throw some different looks at him. So, Boston, for me, this one, I just don't really want to overthink it. I'll take the better offense uh, in a game where the total is set, you know, in the 230s. Yeah, they actually, they hopefully they don't start Griffin out there, Josh. So they got to get, (laughs) we've seen Bunley out there before. I did see that Horford, if I'm not mistaken, Horford and Robert Williams third are somewhat like questionable still or game time decisions. So maybe even possibility of Robert Williams come back here. But I think it's more, obviously, Horford has been the one playing. Williams might come out there and be super rusty. And he's not a shooter. He only plays defensive Mm. rebound. It's hard to be rusty at that, to be honest with you guys. I'm a a basketball player. You can come off from playing a whole year and, I mean, you don't forget (laughs) how to rebound or playing or playing defense guys really all about moving your feet and wanting to stand from the other guy so let's see if they get one of those centers back if they do i'll definitely be joining josh i know me personally chris i wanted to uh, possibly take celtics early in this one before it gets to a super late night sleepy type of game obviously it's a, this game starts at 10 o'clock eastern uh the body clock wise it'll end around like around midnight or one o'clock in the morning for those guys so not a lot of people think about this type of stuff but it's a horrible spot for the lakers as well coming back home off the East Coast road trip. So that's also, it could be even more of a face by somewhat of an older type of team as well, Chris. Uh, are we thinking about riding the Celtics with my guy Josh here? Yeah, I, I really don't have much to add. You guys kind of said it all. I mean, I, I have some recency bias against the Celtics right now because on Saturday I bet on some totals early, which they really disappointed on me for that. And, and then I bet on them last night, which, you know, Kawhi Leonard is just, has not, uh, I don't know, he just, the Clippers haven't seemed like a a team that could put it all together just yet, you know, and then and then they kind of did a little bit last night, right? They really kind of stifled the Celtics on offense. That being said, like to Josh's point, the Celtics just missed a lot of shots. 
Uh, so, you know, eventually that has to regress a little bit, bit back to the mean. Lakers are probably a good team to do that against. They should have a significant wing advantage tonight. Um, yeah, just recency bias for me, guys, and why I'm not betting it. You know, I've been like hovering my finger um, over over the Celtic side like all day, and I'm just not doing it. Uh, but I got a question for you guys instead. I'm not sure if we have any Q&A, but, you know, the Jason Tatum – uh, a conundrum for me like he's like seems like such a nice dude that he's been dominating like I want him to be at the tops mm. of the MVP candidacy but my problem with MVP votes and like somebody winning it is like man he could probably still win it just by going off all season on teams he's supposed to but man when you got a situation like that NBA finals rematch revenge Dude, you gotta step the hell up. Like you, you know what I mean. Like those, those are the moments that stars are made. You know, it's not, it's not against the Pacers. It's not against the Pistons. It's not against, you know, even the 76ers, right? Like those are high emotional games. So, uh, you know, for Josh especially as a Celtics fan, I'm just wondering some of these waning uh, performances from Tatum. I just want to see an end to that. Are we, are we gonna see an end to that? eventually because because then i think he's going to be put at the very top of the mvp race and probably win it you know right there with luca and some others but it's just a little disappointing for me because i'm really rooting for the guy and that keeps happening I, I don't know if it's happened this season aside from that golden state game i think that one was the most obvious one and i think listening to the players afterwards saying that they probably shouldn't have circled it as much as they did and i think they were mm -hmm. trying too hard where they sort of went away from their natural game a little bit yeah. and that was sort of the irk that i think a lot of them had there i think he's shown himself if you look at like i mean you look at opening night against philadelphia he tore them to shreds and that's a pretty big division game against a team who was expected to be yeah. amongst the best teams in the east so as much as i think you know you're not going to necessarily win the mvp just off of a game or two against some of the bottom feeders. I don't think you're going to lose MVP in one or two games either over the course of an 82-game season. So, you know, you'd want a response from him tonight to finish off a road trip. Um, but by and large, I think that the biggest thing for Tatum is it's not just the scoring, it's what he's brought to the table elsewhere. He's one of the best defenders in the league right now. Uh, he's playing at an elite level. He's guarding your best player down the stretch in the clutch. Um, I think those are the things that are sort of standing out to fans and to voters at the minute as well defensively um his playmaking has gone tenfold you know grown tenfold sorry from what it was last season uh his ability to sort of drive and make the right decisions in tough situations when to kick and when to continue to the basket is what's standing out so uh, the growth and development for him is what's sort of put him at the forefront of the conversation and i think the fact that he's still so young is one thing that people seem to forget i mean he is this young. guy is still <laughs> yeah. he's still a couple of years younger than what Giannis and what lebron and what steph were when they won their first ring so he's sort of well ahead of schedule still and i think we're still seeing a lot of that youth come to the fore in, in situations like he said in that golden state one where they probably try a little bit too hard and they try to force things and try to play their way through things as opposed to just, you know, resetting and letting teammates take take uh, their place for, you know, brief periods and stints before then inserting themselves in the right situation. So for Tatum, it, it's just going to keep being about growth. If it's not this season, it's next season. If it's not next season, it might be the season after. But time is on his side, and I think that's probably uh, the most yeah. important thing for him and the Celtics. January 19th, Chris. That's the only thing I'll say. You look uh... – January 19th, my guy. Yeah, yes, sir. I've already looked. I have the spot circled on my calendar, um, but just that's the only thing I'll say. January 19th, we'll meet back here and we'll discuss. Uh, we'll discuss. Boston, see what I'm saying? Boston, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one's in yeah. Boston, so it'll be a lot yeah, different. I guess, um, you know, and I'll shut up after this, but I guess, you know, for me, it's just like so jarring sometimes because he's been so incredible. So to see the flop, so to speak, you know, like in that moment is just, you know, it's just a little jarring, but um all, all great points josh i mean dude he 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 is young he's got plenty of time that's for sure yeah some teams just have your number but to to chris's point a little bit more they didn't even have wiggins in that game so you can't be looking that bad even without their best perimeter defender but we got yeah. our first first question from our guy so look let's go back so josh official play is on uh, uh celtics minus three and a half in this my guys